to EUL Play Day 5, everybody. We have got our match of the day lined up for you. And this might not just be match of the day. This might very well be the match of stage two. I might even go as far as to say this could be the EUL matchup of the year, the way these two are playing at the minute. We've got Wolves, we've got Rogue, and we are going to have an absolute banger hap. Rogue, how are they doing? They're doing well. I mean, they started at the stage with a loss, unfortunately, but managed to bounce back well on that. Now finding themselves in the second place of the split uh, with 10 points, currently two behind Wolves. And this matchup might have been a bit of a pressure point for them if they would have lost it, but Heroic, well, they left points on the board against Secret as well. So no matter what happens here, they will not be dropping out of outside of a top four position today. It's not so much about top four position. I think that Rogue is... Both teams are obviously going into this game to win it. Yes. And I think it's more pressure on Rogue to, to do so, because that means that they will kind of more secure their spot, right? If Wolves takes it, they're just going to be super, super happy about it. But team... <laughs> with Rogue coming into this game, they just kept on playing this aggressive playstyle. And honestly, we can stand here and talk about this team or that team, but these teams are very equal to each other in how they play and just basically all they bring to the table. Both teams bring aggression. Both teams bring individual playstyle. They have, I think, a good base structure that leads to this aggression being working as well. I just find these two teams to being the most all-around complete teams of EUL. So this game, mark my words, it might be a 7-1 <laughs> or 7-2, but this is going to be the best game we're going to see in EUL out of the perspective that these are the two absolutely best teams in the league. I think it's fair to say, if this one comes out at 7-1, 7-2, somebody didn't show up. If both of these teams show us their best, it's definitely going to go the distance. So we need um, another team to play against. Obviously, we've got Rogue. We need Wolves as well, Fabian, if you give us a little rundown. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what I just said. They, it's two super aggressive teams, and I'm just looking forward to see what Wolves can do. I think that Wolves have a little bit more of the aggression part, while I think that Rogue has a little bit more of the calculated stuff. That being said, I don't think the Wolves do things on like without thinking about them. They don't just go in and they don't just push. They have a thought behind it and they are kind of creating a gap that they then fill up with more players. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's like I can stand here and talk about the same two teams and they're exactly the same. I just want to see them go into the server and just battle it out and show with every viewer out that home, back home who is the best team. I, I did enjoy the interview we had with Rise last week where he was basically giving us a little bit of insight in how the team worked. And we were talking about Mowgli, who had an absolute screamer of a game yeah. there. And we're like, what do you do? Because at some point he just ran into the side and got, got quad kill and you won the round of it. Like, I can understand that's not really something that is the strategy because you're not banking on it. And what he said back then is like, yes, you can do, you have that freedom as long as it fits within our game plan. And I think that is a very dangerous part of the Wolves lineup. It could come back to, back to bite them, and then it I realize, as well. well, Wolves bite. But I doubt it, because I feel like Rice is such a leader that he will take control of Mowgli if it's needed to basically take him back. And if you're not performing to the level that he did last game, Rice won't allow the same thing. We do have a head-to-head, -head, and it's something we want to talk about here, because we're saying that these two are the best teams, but why are they the best teams? And I think it comes back to the spines of both of these teams. We have two players that have bit different roles. Leon being now a hard support in the role, which doesn't say much, because Rogue and hard support don't go hand in hand. And then Rice just being the oldest man on the planet, basically, taking control of his team and mentally keeping them in check, but also being a true leader for them. These are the two players that will keep their team in the game and they com the complete spine of it. And they are two of the reasons I think that both of these teams are succeeding right now. Then Bibu call Rise one of the dinosaurs that lived through the extinction event? I'm pretty sure that was mentioned. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the quote he had about it. But you know, definitely both those players absolutely like, doing well in their jobs. But you, as you said, you can say that about every single player. Everybody yeah. is doing their job. Everybody is doing what is asked of them. And that is why these two teams are currently at the top. Certainly is. Let's have a look then where we are going to be shaking down for this one. We'll have our map bands come in. Final choice goes to Rogue. It's Bancor Clubhouse, and they are going to pick up Clubhouse. I don't know if this is a trick from Rogue or if this is a calculated move. I'd say it's a calculated move in the sense of obviously they are the ones who picked it. But I'm wondering if they have tricked Wolves into leaving Club Open and expecting them to ban it as the last ban to go to Bank, which Rogue have been really good at. 
I think this might be a little bit in the favor of Rogue, because I think Wolves are probably prepared better for Bank, but that I'm just making up in my mind. What I do know, though, is Clubhouse, fundamental map, step-by-step -step plan. Both these teams know how to do that into perfection. It's just shaping up to be an amazing matchup. It is. I think that's one of the things that sort of map takes that element away now. This is two teams that are just going to go to, you know, all lengths to get this one won, and it's going to be a fantastic showdown. We've got the lobby ready. We've got the map. We've got the teams. We've got everything that we need. All we need is two casters, and I'm going to be one of them. So we're going to head over that way. Des and me will take it away. Run like the wind. With the assist this time, Tim. I've got the button ready, so when you do plug in, like this, ready, it's a three-step process. One, two, bam. There we go. How do they hey! build that synergy? I've left my eye, I've left my tablet over. Oh. Well, I've got my glasses, man. I'll get it in a um, second. I saw Haps, you three. Haps running it over now, look at this. There we go. Ah. Thank you. I saw you through the specs and thought I need to join him. I mean, looking dashing, as always. <laughs> that was you earlier, mate. Ugh. You've uh, been glowing in my absence, mate, is all I'll say. Well then. You look stunned by that, mate. Was it too kind to you? This is too much of a compliment. You clearly must um, be far too much. Exactly. Let's crack on. Shall, shall, we, <laughs> shall we watch a game of Siege? Yeah, listen, I actually, you want me, you know what? I've been saying for a while, this is the game of the stage. All week long, game of the stage. Can't wait for it. Going to be super exciting. Felt that way since Playday 3. Then you come in and go, and dare I say this, the it's going to be the game of the, of the year. year. And I was like, actually, that sounds it far better be. in my head. No, I agree. I think given what we've seen across the year, like Heroic played great in stage one, but we didn't really see a huge amount of competition towards them. These two teams, this stage, have just hit new heights that we haven't seen in Europe for a long time. Rogue destroyed Heroic on Oregon. It wasn't even clear on Rogue, sorry, I'm not thinking of. I was thinking back to Wolves playing against them, sorry. They just made them look silly from start to finish. It wasn't really a particularly close fixture. And I'm just thinking, okay, well, if Heroic are now in the background, they're in the back mirror of everyone else. What does that say? It was Wolves. Yeah, it was Wolves on, uh, against them last week. Mostly tore them apart, I remember. We just haven't seen them really shape up into being a competitor, it feels. And with that defeat against Secret earlier, now there's only two teams you're looking at. It's Wolves and Rogue. The only other team on the outside right now that may be in with the shot coming out of seemingly nowhere is BDS. They look shaky to start the season. But right now, it's about these two teams on your screen. It's Wolves and Rogue. I don't know which way this one's going to go. We were perfectly split across the desk. The talent, it was like a beautiful like bit of symmetry. It was like... Walls rogue, walls rogue, walls rogue, all the way across. Even socials joined. We didn't even well. plan it. We didn't even. We didn't. Plan it. And even the socials themselves, we've seen a 47, 53% split for this oh. game, Tim. So clearly no one's really got a super solid idea of which way it should go, which just means it's going to be a tantalizing fixture. And for my money, I hope this goes all the way to overtime. This is exactly what I was going to say. Same point I was going to make, Des. I just hope both teams show up. I hope that there's no nerves kicking in. I hope the excitement doesn't get the better of them. And I just want to see both of them on the very best that we've seen over the last few play days come in and give this absolutely everything. You know what does bother me? The teams are the wrong colours. Wolves should be the orangey <laughs> colour and Rogue should be the blue colour. That's the Sometimes it's just how it works out, Des. No, it's it's not though, Tim. You know, we've it's got to, ruined it for me. We've got I'm sure there's a process there. You know, we've got to we've got to follow it. I'm so upset. That was like the one thing that would have made this day perfect. We can't just suit you, Desertu. But we can suit everyone around the world who likes the colours being correct. Round number one. Then. It's going to be Jim and Bedroom to kick things off. Uh, we've got a cash side setup being brought along. Quite a heavy cash side setup, actually. We've got a Wamai magnet. We've got two ADSs. You'll be glad to know, Des, that the magnet is miles away from the ADSs. <laughs> so if it grabs a nade, it's not going to be taking the whole lot down. Thank we've God. got a shield. So top red stairs. I really hope it's held on to with force. There's P4 has just come back in there. I was going to say he'd rotated underneath. I didn't want to see that position sort of abandoned with all that utility there. But no, P4 is going to be at the top of red. He's going to be supporting Rise, really trying to stop Rogue playing into that area. But Rogue may well choose to just sort of circumvent it a little bit here. Leon's going to open up construction wall with Exothermic very quickly. And that makes it difficult now because Rise and P4, they're sort of playing their lives out here. What I do like about the bands, by the way, we didn't really get a chance. I was too busy going over, oh, look at Heroic being left out of the picture a little bit. Sure. As I being banned away, they, these two teams have played this map like once in the last five months each. You've barely seen it. And for Rogue, it was just after they picked up Spoit playing in the Games Without Borders uh, tournament that was on before the seat stage got underway. And I think for Wolves, it was actually back in last stage when they were known as LFO. So we just simply haven't seen either team play in really recent history. Certainly not since Azami was a thing. So getting her off the board, there should be no, I'm not to say no surprises. There'll be less 
less surprises coming out from either side. Leon picking up Ibu to kick things off for us. This <laughs> manages to get a second as well. Shinka does find Kanto along the way, but that's going to leave us 4v3 with Rise and Bibu both down. Two of the big hitters Leon. from Wolves have been taken oh, oh, oh. out. But no, Shinka bringing the aggression. Manages to rip Leon off the rappel, and that levels us up at 3v3. Absolutely love that as well. Great read coming in, and Leon had an inkling, but the problem is when you're on the rappel, you can only turn towards the right so far, and I don't think he simply had the opportunity. Spoit sees the feet of P4, but can't quite take him out. Down about 35 HP, looking pretty tense towards the end of this round, Tim. Spoit's gone in. He's just looking to They're all in. through. <laughs> yeah, they really are just stood in the middle. Out goes the Nitro and oh, gets it! Morgley! Not just one, but two. Morgley sits them down. Deepak, he manages to find Chinka, leaving us now in a 2v1. He's going to have to find more kills. Oh, Can he oh, find oh, yeah, what? he gets the spray down. He finds P4. It's now down to this. Deepak versus Morgley, and there's an edge on the clock. Oh, what a little match to have at the end as well. Deepak has been shining the last couple of play days, and Mowgli, the superhero, he wins the 1v1. <laughs> a double C4 into a 1v1. That is how you start the game of the year, Tim. It really is. <laughs> Mowgli underneath him, bar. Nobody from Rogue had picked him up. There was no challenge onto the mid floor there. No pressure to stop somebody playing for that vertical denial. And boy, did it come back to bite them as Mowgli was able to just rip spite and crying down in the middle of Master Bedroom. And what a first round from Wolves there. It really did look like they were on the back foot. Leon got those couple of kills early on in the round, but then Shinka's aggression just seemed to sort of drag them back into it. I love that little peek from Shinka. Oh. It's so small things, right? It's when, it's when teams make plays like that. And think back to the game you and I cast earlier on as well, when we had pawns coming up against outsiders. The number of drone baits in that game, whether they were normal drones or they were Flores, uh, Roteros, it didn't matter. You'd see them come around the corner and half a second later, someone was there to take a gunfight off the back of a defender shooting at that drone. That's just... Again, brilliant little bits of reactionary play. Shinka's played it perfectly there. Got Leon for free. Mogi on the downstairs. Rogue for getting that one critical detail, which stings because Rogue, for me, are the vertical nade base team. They love playing explosives from below, but here didn't employ that in the round, and Mowgli goes big. There was an interesting uh, mute jammer placement just in the middle of the round as well. Um, there's one in the same position again, and it just prevented the Claymore from working coming in through the uh, the drone hole. Thank you very much. It's just on the inside of Jim Wall, actually, Medics. Uh, there you go. You see, that's the little one down there. It just prevented that Claymore from working because it's a nasty Claymore to get rid of because mm. you really struggle to get the angle without to be being able, blown without to triggering it. It's, it's quite a tough one, so it was uh, quite a smart placement, obviously playing mm. into keeping drones, twitch drones, anything else out of there as well but it just worked out quite well for Wolves. Also worth stressing as well that with the Thatcher being available on this map it isn't always that common I know Rogue Spoit especially has been quite vocal about his uh, thoughts on Finca i.e. that he absolutely tests and thinks he should be banned away all the time that's why here he is playing on the Yana as the second best option but with that Thatcher being on side these rounds will be very quick and when I think of both of these teams that kind of pressurized volatile nature I kind of associate the word pressure with Rogue and volatility with Wolves that being available Available, the Thatcher just enables them to be so much more aggressive and more fast-paced. And I think that is ultimately a large part of why you'll see walls being open quick, teams storming their way through, three players leaping into sight like in the last round. You'll see that time and time again. I think that the Thatcher being available sometimes just leads us to a little bit of creativity on defence as well, because you, well, you, sort, have of, to. you sort of know there's, there's no point bringing along the Bandit or the Kaid, for example, because they're just going to get dealt with so quickly that it sort of opens up those spaces in your lineup where you might yeah. otherwise think, oh, you, you, yeah, we have to bring those. They are must-takes. But Thatcher just removes that. As you say, the Nade doing a ton of damage to Rise there, but he does manage to dip away and keep his eye for the time being. Spite just poorly timed there, but the Nade comes in. It's a beauty. Mowgli can do nothing but push forward and challenge, and somehow both escape without any damage for now. Oh, the two-point push coming in as well. Oh, and Spite still wins it out. Not before Shink has found Kanto elsewhere, though. Spite into a second. Talk about the honor all you like, but that IRX sings. Find themselves a 4v1 early on and rise. The man who narrowly survived that blast from the nade earlier on is on 5 HP up on the hatch. Deepak going in for the plant at this point as well. It looks like Rogue have got this one on lockdown, Tim, because we know how it goes when you're in a 1vx and the X has a Monty. This is it. Leon was just bullying Rise on that hatch. He was just watching him, feeding all the information. He knew that it was an opportunity for that diffuser to go down. And with Rise on such low health, this is surely just a matter of time until things
Kings level up. Rise takes the first fight into Moto. Can't find his man. And here comes the big shieldy boy pushing forward. And it's going to be Spike to pop up from behind and find that final kill. Easy as that. And that is Rogue leveling things up in the perfect start to a game that we were thoroughly excited about. It's 1-1. What I love is across those first two rounds, you've had a Mowgli 3K and now a Spoit 3K. The two players that everyone has been dying to see clash this stage. And the thing is, looking at Rogue, many looked at them at the start of the stage and said, oh, Spoit's going to be the wonder kid. He'll do it all. The thing is, it's not just Spoit, though, as well. You've seen Crying currently top of the tables for them. You've also got Deepak absolutely flying off the handle. There's three of them on this team that are highly capable. And you can say the same about Wolves. Oh, Mowgli the Magician. He's going to carry them through. Maybe P4 will get involved. Sure, but this stage, it's all been about Bibu as well. He's had a slow start to this game, Tim, but we know what he's like. We've seen the capability of Wolves all stage, so don't count them out just yet. There are still plenty of people to get involved and become stars in this game. Round number three it is then. Who is going to come out on top? Like you say, plenty of opportunities for people to shine, and this could be one of them. We're going to see a defence of bar and stage. Not one that we see too often. It's one of those sites that just gets brought along as almost trying to put a bump in the road for the attackers. Are they prepared for it? Are they ready for a push onto bar and stage? Have they practised it, scrimmed it quite enough to be able to nail it down? The focus here for Rogue is likely getting control of top floor particularly construction we saw it the other day i think it was g2 correct me if i'm wrong it was dorky from the hatch inside of construction showed us just how powerful that position can be and i'm sure that wolves are going to be trying to replicate exactly that I mean, why wouldn't you as well? It can be a really effective spot to play. I always think back, whenever I think of this site, I always get very nostalgic about Na'Vi, back when Doki was on the team as well. I'm thinking about the three-floor play they'd have. You have the mirror holding construction upstairs. You have a player with the C4 down in basement with the hatch open inside a bar. You just end up with a seemingly unlimited number of options that you can employ to make it much harder for the attackers to effectively clear the entirety of Clubhouse, especially when the bar is that central part of the map the defenders can then play from quite comfortably. At least here, there's a big focus up on the top four, four or five players up here at this point so surely rogue know that that is where the ingress has got to come through where they've got to start putting down a bit of pressure spikes just looking to work onto those bedroom windows and again try to cut off any rotates away from construction nearly gets himself peeked out from behind the master bed there but just manages to avoid danger looking to continue pressure onto the cctv window rogue need to get themselves established inside of the map here not something that they've done as of yet leon has opened the east breach he's maybe going to go and have a look at the construction wall now and that could be the driving force but Kanto's taken a lot of damage upon Lodgy Hatch here and Spike's going to take a bit more as P4 uh -oh. finds the kill. Shinka, Mowgli getting in on the action. Mowgli with a second. 4v1 in the bat of an eyelid. I think Rogue went again for the sort of play you're so used to seeing, the kind of high pressure. We all push in at once, we go for kills. But the problem is you're not against some team that you can knock about for fun at this point. You're against a really solid opponent here in EUL. And Wolves have shut that down like nothing else. Deepak, the last one left alive outside on the breach. We all know that other sense, Tim. We certainly do. It's a matter of time. Deepak oh, manages we? to find one. Well, we say this, Des. We said it earlier tonight, and Pasha was able to overcome the odds. Will Deepak be able to do it now? Fans, he's first. Needs to just try and break these down into 1v1s, and this is the problem that he's really? facing. He's had to go in. He's had to take even more damage from that laser gate, and this is where it gets difficult because Wolves yeah, are there. playing it smart. <laughs> they all pushed at the same time. Yes. There was a 3-2-1 count there, Des, in the background because you could just see them all aggress forward together, and that is why it was so difficult for Deepak to win that. If that's against another team that isn't playing as connected Siege as Wolves are, then maybe you get away with it. Maybe you get the odd 1v1, somebody peeks, you get a kill. But Wolves, absolutely not. They knew that they had each other's angles covered and they pushed together. Perfectly played. And just hold down the left click on that outer as well, right? I mean, oh, that's yep. masking the sound of the Oryx coming up down the corridor behind you as well. Again, just really good coordinated play. So as it stands, we've seen a little bit of a flavour across the last three rounds. It's in the sport Wonder Kid, the Mowgli Wonder Kid, coming into the last round being the first really concerted team effort that Walls managed to hold back. Down we go once again into the basement, Tim, and we'll see if things shape up any differently. Interesting thing about that last round is worth remembering, that was bar and stage. That wasn't upstairs in gym and bedroom, like everywhere where all the action went off. It was a different site. So in a way, for Walls, that's kind of a freebie in the back pocket now. You'll see gym and bedroom be unlocked again next round, or sorry, this round it would have been unlocked. They can go back there again if they so choose. 
Going to be just sorting out the jacuzzi wall there, Bibu. We've got the bit of denial. It's the same two mute jammers. They're going to be trying to hold on to that top floor once again. Shinka, evil eye downstairs. What was the problem for them holding on to this last time around? How did Rogue manage to undo them? It was a couple spite. of kills in blue. It was spite pushing through that direction that really opened them up. And as I often say on this site, you want to be attacking from at least two sides. They had the kitchen hatch open and they were able to push through blue. Bit of pressure from Dirt Tunnel as well. That's really the key here. Get those def defenders spinning round on their heels. Don't allow them to just focus up on one point of ingress. The other, the other big thing, let's not forget, was the Monty coming in through Dirt, right? Just drawing up attention, feeding information across to the rest of the team. They don't have that this time. It's Leon on the Twitch instead. He's still playing the same sort of spot. He was trying to push his way down towards Dirt. You saw the Maestro step up and clear out one of those shock drones, so he knows, okay, there's likely to be some resistance. I just saw a flash, though. He has now got a drone up against the door, so he's still putting all of his focus inside of Dirt. So very much a similar push, just with different operators doing the job. And have multiple drones moving down Dirt Tunnel now. Twitch drone included. First one goes in. They're just looking to see if there's any utility they can catch, but need to be careful because there's a good chance that they lose this one. No, manages to get away with it. Take down the Razor Bloom. That's that so is gone. a big start. Twitch drone is lost, but it does allow them just a little bit of entry in through that Dirt Tunnel with a little bit lower risk. Here we go. It's Rise coming up against Spoit here. Rise as he pushes down. Mike does come on the other end of this ARX, and it's not a pretty place to be. And Leon finds him. Beautiful bit of team play again. We always speak about these little micro pinches that come out of the members of Rogue. You know, Leon's focused on coming down through dirt. Spoit makes the call. Okay, it just shut out the drone on main stairs. Leon says two seconds. Springs up and finds his man. Then goes a little bit too aggressive, maybe out of turn, away from the rest of the team, down main stairs to get picked up for free. So a small mistake being made by Spoit there as well. Maybe just tempering that, as you say, that uh, aggression and timing from Rogue. But still 4v4, one minute 10 left on the clock. A good bit of map control, but it's too easy for Bibu from above, Des. They've missed him up there on the top floor. Kanto gets taken down inside a kitchen. Leon takes damage inside a dirt tunnel. And this is not looking pretty for Rogue right now, as they've still, above all else, Got Bibu out on the roam. He is a problem, and he could be a round-ending problem. I'm wondering where that swing is. I'm sure P4 knows that he's pushing down blue at this point. And yes, Bibu coming down from above. Mowgli's already gone down. They've got to make their move now. Otherwise, this could very quickly start collapsing. Bibu coming down behind. A flank drone will be absolutely everything. And Kryon is ready. Here he comes in. SMG spraying away. You know that he's barely got any ammo, but the shotguns are in handy. It is daring him to come around. And there we go. The one pump into Kryon's chest. Down he goes. He's out of the round. A 3v2 in 25. Another kill for Shinka. This one looks done and dusted. Once again, Wolves have held on. Bibu played that really well. As the crying, to be fair, it was, you know, watching that little 1v1 tussle at the top of Blue Stairs was fascinating. Crying's movement was fantastic, how he sort of baited the doorway to begin with. The SMG shots come through and tell him everything he needs to know. Bibu's close right, but then Bibu just takes it up a notch, switches to the shotgun and just such a nice quick peek to take Crying down. Absolutely beautiful. Crying maybe could have just extended the distance a little bit more, but, but there's a reason that he didn't because if he drops back onto that platform, he completely exposes his flank towards blue. And if there's a call there that he's in a challenge at the top of it, it could be that somebody has a little look. So he's so limited, he can't go any further than the steps he's on. And it was just well played by Bibu. It was. It's one of those, again, I think, where Wolves at the minute are showing the same sort of thing that it's upset other teams. Just the... The constant spiky edge, and the way I've always described them is Wolves are more volatile than what Rogue are. I think Rogue are a little bit more structured, but Wolves are really spiky. Those individual players talking about Bibu, about P4, about Mowgli, of course, as well. Even Rise, when he's had some of these tearaway games, you let one player slip through the net, they'll kill three or four of you very comfortably, and that is what Rogue have got to be so careful of. This has got to be informed pressure coming out of them, because a the couple of times they've missed it here or let something slip through, they've really paid the price. That's it. It's about not having those slips, not allowing people to, to get on the flank or to get out in the map and are left unchecked and that's something that Rogue definitely need to tighten up here is that information game, the drones making sure that they know exactly where everybody is. So we're going to be heading back up to the top floor, it's round number five for Wolves here on the defence and they are taking us back to gym and bedroom. We saw it in round one, it was a Wolves win. They're going to be looking for more of the same. There was a bit of a push from Rogue in towards construction side, they tried to drop logistics hatch, none of it really worked. They never got control over that side of the map. Um, and then it was left down to, to Deepak to try and push in from the jacuzzi wall. And it was just too much to do with too little time. And Wolves played it beautifully in the three versus one to close it out. Very similar setup at the top of Red Stairs. They're going to be holding on to cash. 
for dear life once again. I think where Rogan maybe tried to pull the wall over Walls' eyes a little bit here and just be like, ha, going to a map that you didn't expect. You haven't seen this here for a long time. We've got some surprises. Clearly, Walls have got a few of their own up their sleeves as well because they are playing the map with confidence here, getting out and about, out on the roam, into Lodge, up and down main stairs, just constantly asking questions of Rogue, who at least for now have got Leon starting things off here on the single construction wall to half, kind of cut the rotate back and they've got to be so wary of Shinka and what he did last time round, let's not forget. Looking to gain access in towards Kitchen. They need to be very careful of Mogul. I think that's exactly what they're looking to deal with. Um, is trying to make sure they find him out. Comes the go. run out. P4. Wow. Impact nears the barricade. Runs out and gets Kanto. And I don't know about you, Des. It just feels like everything is going right for Wolves. I at the mean, minute. Tim, they've got four claymores in back pocket. You'll be asking questions for Rogue. I mean, admittedly, why would you expect a garage run out in that kind of position? It's not normally the go to. But again, four claymores in back pocket. It's a, a little bit late now. It's a little bit late, Cry and you've already lost a man. Those should have been deployed as step one here. It's a checklist map. Rogue, you might be quick, you might be good at the pressure game, but you cannot skip steps one, two, and three, which is getting prepped for that kind of craziness. As you say, you're not yet, you're not necessarily going to expect that run out, but it's about attention to detail. If you're going to play on the rappel above the East Breach, there's always a chance. There's always a chance you could be hit from there. So I mean, why else bring them, right? Attention to detail. They're going to be thinking about the windows, I think, particularly getting the claymores down on there, but they've still got enough of them to do that. They know, for example, the Claymore they played on Jacuzzi last time was muted out, so they won't use that one again. Kills are flying in here, and somehow Rogue managed to come out on top. It's 3v2. They've got themselves inside of the map. It's up to Bibu and Shinka to hold on now. Again, it was just a really good pinch there. I think it was Leon and Spoit playing together into construction. Rise had no idea who's getting pushed from the south side of construction. Clearly expected there to be support from his team that didn't come to be. They've got to deal with one inside a Lodgy and one inside a bathroom. The fear being that Bibu here is sat behind a shield. He's got that information onto the door where Spoit's going to push through. But the other beauty is there's a little bit of time to play behind here. A nice C4, a few more inches to the right, and that would have been a dead Spoit. But again, the beauty is they've got time. They can play with information and pick up kills. Spoit gets another as Bibu rotates out of bathroom, and now the guessing game begins. The cat hunt is on. It's 3v1. One inside of Lodge. He needs to be careful. Spoit is going to be getting the diffuser down. The challenge may come and does. It's crying to shut him down with a headshot, and that is going to be Raw closing out around that well. Could have been tough there after they took that initial loss from the B4 run out. But Rogue bouncing back well and taking us to 3-2. We could be on for a dream split of 3-3 in the first half. Wouldn't that be lovely? Wouldn't that be nice, Tim? That's the way we want it to go. And I imagine we'll see Jim and Bedroom again, given that's where Wolves won out in round one. have lost here in round five, but... Round one was that magical 3K out of Mowgli. I guess my only real concern is that last round did not look close. The first one was incredibly close, only just going in your favor. Do you still feel really confident you can shut down Rogue? Now you kind of had the, you pulled out the magic tricks, you had the run out, you've gone that little bit aggressive. That's your trick now done, right? Rogue can have an idea of what to expect. So this could be a pretty dicey round to close things out in this half. We've got members of Wolves fighting over getting the uh, utility down there. There's a razor oh, bloom. Me, goes, oh, me. No, me first, me first with the frost mat. Um, we've got the <laughs> razor bloom and frost mat. Both being played on the same window there. The razor bloom, I'm not sure about the placement. Um, I don't know if we can just have a quick look at it, Medics. It's on the edge of the bed. I'm not sure if it can just be shot at... Oh, no, it's underneath. Okay. I thought it had caught sort of the pillow area, and I thought if that gets left there, it's just going to get shot out from yeah. the window. But it's not. It's further down the wall, so absolutely not a problem whatsoever. If somebody comes through there, they're going to go in the frost Smart, and guess what? The Razor Bloom, it's going to finish them off. Absolutely. There used to be a similar trick with a Legion Mine. You'd leave a Goo Mine next. Let them bleed out. Yep. Obviously, it inflicts a little bit of damage, or used to. Well, you go in the Frost Mart and the Legion Mine will kill you. Yeah. Used to. When it used to have used done to, the first bit had, of damage, yeah. but exactly. obviously now they took it's that away, and it's more just damage. So now you use a Razor Bloom. Because it used to be really irritating, just walking through the map and running into, like, four of those traps at once. You look back at how strong they used to be back when they used to give you like the full indicators throughout you the, can entire see from map. the entire map. And it was yeah, basically it was, free intel, like was, through yeah, and through. Absolutely. Such a powerful operator. And now we don't really see Legion all that much anymore. Especially the, the one thing that I think people forget about Legion that was powerful as well was, as you say, you could see them through the entire map, but it meant you could see them through soft surfaces. So you could just wait for somebody to come in and then just blast with a shotgun through the soft surface. Yeah. Like, it was a problem. <laughs> now you can't see them unless you've got direct line of sight. Speaking of problem, I think for walls, they know there's a problem brewing outside a construction window here as well. They've got a shotgun on one side. They're 
ready for Leon on the other. Oh. This is wonderful. I love this. So this is stop a nade coming in from the south side because they had someone to challenge on the south here where P4's giving support. Has also, of course, got magnets coming onto this window. Beautiful little adaptation coming out of Wolves. I love that change to the bandit batteries as well yeah. um, that we've seen recently whereby you can add a second onto a surface um, because bandit tricking had all become redundant pretty much. You know, it, it was very easy to again. deal with, but now it's, it's a much more real possibility. We're going to have the construction wall opened up successfully this time, but look at the time. It's now taken half of the round and it means that they're not going to be using those breaching charges elsewhere. Deepak does have the Selma charges, so can open the Jacuzzi wall, but the breach will be more limited than it would with an exothermic. Oh, and that's the kind of kill you're looking for to start a round out as well. Spoit bringing down Mowry, the magician. Off he goes off the board. And it is the mute as well. So that's C4 that <laughs> ended Worlds last time around. It came from below. The 2K that Mowgli connected is simply not going to happen this time around. It looks like it could be difficult for Wolves to hold on to this one, but time is going to be their friend. If they can keep burning it out here, they're down with one minute left to survive. Four versus five, still certainly in the race, but Rogue are starting to get a little bit more aggressive, just seem a little bit more confidence in the gunfights. They need to deal with Shinka, though. Do they spot him out? Absolutely, yes, they do. That's going to force Shinka away. It's going to allow them into construction proper now. They can think about about getting inside and opening things up. Bathroom wall being opened as well. Nitro wow. will clear off the Selma. It's a high cost, but it is an important wall to keep closed at this point. And a worth one because there's no Selmas left. They've got no other hard breach at this point. They only brought along the Ace and the Thermite. I wouldn't expect them to bring three for this site, but it turns out they may have just needed it. You're going to see a classic rogue all swamp site at once here. It's going to have to be really aggressive and really pacey as Leon returns to where he started the round out. They've got Rise on one side, Shink inside a Lodgy, and here we go all at once. I'm glad the observers doing this otherwise you'd have no idea it's two kills up main stairs comes crying to trade out leon trades him it's back and forth p falls the last one left alive but does point know where he is bathroom is the answer spoit sees him and gets the kill rogue end it three and three and yet again it's another crazy hectic end to the round tim what a first half we've had absolutely fantastic and as you say that top down view there was beautiful just to see how it was trade for trade for trade there was one particularly that caught my eye. Crying moves up main stairs. Leon's coming out of logistics. Takes the challenge. Leon gets the trade. They know that they have man advantage at that point so they can just take every single fight like that. And it's almost like I, I can't think of uh, the analogy but it's like basically this part can't be removed until this one is and that's how role play it. We're going to remove them and then we can remove them. Then we can take that out and it's just step by step. Absolutely. I've also got no idea what analogy you're on about. I, can't it's, I think it's a game. <laughs> I want to say no it's not that. I don't know mate, I don't know. You can have a good think like and you can tell me. When you remember, you can tell me. Is it like Tetris or Rush Hour? Oh, rush Hour. It's like Rush Hour. It'll, it'll come back to me. All right, I'm sure it will. Again, it was just one of those. And I've really... Here, here now. Yeah, this is it, look. Because, again, the play comes in, cry and dies out. It's trade yeah. for trade for trade the, the whole way through. The speed of thought and comms there is fantastic. You know, that well, comes thing from is, just hours and hours of playing with each it other. It does, but a lot of it comes down from knowing what the plan is and just knowing where you've got to move yeah. and when. Like, the fact that Leon drops down, vaults into Logi, gets Shinka, and then keeps on pushing through. Like, massively pivotal play coming out from Leon. And... It, again, is such a joy to watch. And again, I want to give a big shout out to the Observer Medics on that one as well. Easy also does this a lot too. Normally at round ends, we like to jump on and watch the first person view of one of the players getting kills. That is spot on the right call. To us to be able to see that level of detail oh, at the round end. Brilliant. You know, otherwise you guys are watching the death screen the whole time. You don't want to see that. You want to see exactly what's happened to appreciate the beauty. And we've got it all there in 4K. So thank you very much, Medics. Medics and Easy are pretty good, really. I love them both, mate. They're pretty both. good. They are pretty good. They are. They're, they're, they're all right, I guess. To be fair. Yeah, you know, just just like best in the world, but it's no big deal. It's no, it's not a big no, deal. No, not really. Um, I know they don't like to talk about no, it. No, not much. Um, <laughs> we're going to be heading into round number seven, then we're going to switch sides. It's 3 3 days. It's exactly what we want. There's nothing to separate these two teams. They are both <laughs> showing up. And they are what? both showing up right now. Shinka Mowgli managing to get two big openers. Double jump out. Crying and Spoit taken down. I love that because it's the, it's the father son pair. It's crying and sport both out two windows at the same time, but Wolves were just ready. I don't know if that was on drones or if it was just snap reactions, but either way, they've caught an absolute blinder there getting rid of those two. But I'll give it to Rogue, first round of the defence. You're going to try something crazy? That's the time to try and do something crazy. 
Whew, what a start we've had to the second half then. Wolves on the attack can really slow things down now, especially being that it's a Church and Arsenal site. Teams are quite familiar with attacking this in the final 20, 30 seconds. They don't need to leave it that way, but they do have plenty of time to build up the preparation ready for that final execute. Leon could play a big part here. If he can pick a kill up onto Mowgli, maybe grab another on the flank. It just levels things out and that could have a big impact on the middle of this round. Rogue are actually still playing this quite aggressive, Des. They've mm. got Leon up at the top of blue stairs they've got Deepak playing in around bathroom Cantor's up there as well they are not backing off I guess it's kind of a you know you've, you've invested this much in being risky if you sit on site now you're getting smacked by a five-man execute and there's a good chance you get traded to oblivion you lose the best thing you can do is play this more disruptive questionable play style where the other side will be like okay well where are they are they going to stab us in the back at the last second are they going to do something unexpected because that's how they might find themselves with the win rise almost there being c4 out by Deepak as well who's still hovering around this top side of the stairs narrowly keeps himself alive mp5k for the win steps his way back up sees the man coming through and almost catches the transition spray on towards the double doorway, but Mowgli stays alive for now. So aggressive. This is terrifying, Deepak. He's going to take some up. damage. Oh, He's going to take a little bit down at the bottom. Cantor still inside a strip. Oh, Not Rise. really been dealt with, but Rise is sitting there just waiting for him to push across from bathroom. He's low health. This is going to be the rest of round. The rest of the round for Rise. I mean, Cantor needs to get on the board as well, right? He's zero and six. Playing on a roll like the visual. You've got to make something happen here, and this is the time because the site is getting hit. The question is, do they know about that? Almost a double lining up, but it simply wasn't the case. Down goes Cantor. So Deepak getting one, getting two. But does he know about the main stairs? No, he does not. Mowgli with the final kill. And that first round expectantly after that first 2K coming in on the jump out, going over to Wolves. I think a lesson will be learnt for Rogue there. And that is that Wolves are ready for anything. Don't try the double jump out because you're likely going to come off worst. That's going to be Rogue slowing things down a little bit now. I don't think, you know... There's nothing wrong with it. That's not a criticism. Give no. it a whirl. First defensive round, I tell you what, if you get two kills there or if you take down the hard breach, they can't get the hatches, you're coming away from that laughing, even oh, yeah. if you lose a, a player along the way. You, you're absolutely laughing. Nothing wrong with trying it, but now's the time to think, right, that didn't work. We need to go back to quote-unquote proper siege. Like We need to stay in the map. Timmy, you're saying they're not playing proper siege? Well, jump outs aren't proper siege. What are you, from NA? Maybe they'll think it's time to stay inside the map, is all I'm saying. I want to see five of them outside Nothing now. wrong with giving it a whirl. Just to really throw things to the don't winds. Don't double down on it, Rog. Come on, you're playing well, and there's definitely rounds to be won here. All five out the windows. I really doubt we're going to see it. Again, yeah, I don't like dogpiling on one player too hard, but again, I've got to see Kanto get involved now. I will give it that last round. Not much he could do. Rise had those stairs held. Cantor had oh, no he was, way of he was knowing. sitting there for the rest of the round. Oh, he was not. I mean, why would he do anything else? You've yeah. got, again, a numbers advantage. You can afford to expend a couple of players on holding flanks or droning for the rest of the team whilst the other three push in and play for trades in the three, what would be two on site, given we had Kanto off. And they knew about that because he killed drones earlier in the round. So Wolves was acting off really good intel, knowing that they had him pinned in, that he couldn't push anywhere. And even if he did try and go via the pool table, they'd still be able to catch him on that long line of sight that Rise had. So, really smart play from Wolves. I think Wolves have just unlocked ordered a magazine each into the nearest window to them all the around the map there. <laughs> They're having absolutely none of it. And Rogue, to be fair, have not gone and given anything up either. We're going to have that prox alarm. We're going to have the alibi decoy taken down. That's the Twitch drone doing good work there, feeding intel and removing obstacles, barriers, utility that lie ahead of them. Shinka is going to hop in through that blue window straight away. There's a couple of Rogue players out uh, on the roam that need to be dealt uh, with. That's going to be one dealt with as Leon gets taken down. Bibu finds Deepak, five versus two, and they're going to have to try and collapse back to site here, but the diffuser's going oh down already. It's too little, too late, Des. Okay, <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> they did exactly the same thing against... Who was it they played against on Oregon? I mean, they saw there were like three players off site and they just rushed down through laundry. Secret. Yeah, went straight for a plan. They said, oh, no one's here. Into site we go. They've just been hit by exactly the same thing by Wolves who identified that chance of, oh, there are two or three of them off site here. Boys, we can just go straight in. And they dogpile in. They absolutely slap them silly. A flawless round to boot as well. A Bieber 3K. Oh. Couldn't I mean, have gone any better. That's Wolves fighting fire with fire as well. Yeah. So round seven, Rogue think, right, we're going out of the windows here. We'll try and shock them. We'll just catch them on the back foot. And it doesn't work. So then Wolves think, OK, if we're going to try a bit of that, we've got a round ahead. Let's give it some. We're going straight to site here. Opportunities there. And in they go. Ripping that side wide open. Now then, Rogue are facing a super important round here, Des. They need to get this on the board. Interestingly, they've gone to CCTV cash, which for me has become 
a 50-50 site at best in favour of defenders. You know, attackers have a lot of success here on this site. Gym and bedroom might have been the other option, but Rogue are going to give it a chance on the east side of the map. And still wanted to get out and be... Not so much aggressive, but the looks at wanting to do some play on the below here as well. They've got the bandit tricking, obviously, to come through as well. So for Wolves, knowing that you've got that Thermite to play around is great, but the question here is, do you get drawn into trying to play from below as well? Do you use the nades in the back pocket of the Iana and of the Sledge to clear things out from below? Because not only will you remove the bandit batteries, you might also remove the player as well, and that'll be the dream. Shinka just going to be... Claymore in off the door, they're not going to have any runouts like the ones they benefited from, but you would more expect it on this site, to be fair. We've got Kanto just playing inside of that double wall. Maybe this is his moment to shine, Des. Maybe this is the one where he just bandit tricks off any attempts to open that wall. But right now, Mowgli straight into construction and taken straight down by crying. That's going to be some of the hard breach gone. It's putting a lot more pressure onto Bibu here, and he has to keep himself alive. And then high tells it back into the safe waiting arms of his son, Spoitz, who was down there ready for him to be able to cover him, at least coming in from the stock side, where, quite understandably, you might expect a little bit of a pinch to come in from the side of walls. Now, losing Mowgli here, is it the be-all and end-all? Arguably, no. You've lost your uh, ace. Okay, it's not really the best thing in the world. You want to keep that online. You've still got the Thermite to be able to get the wall opened up. It just means they're limited now in terms of what they can choose to open. And they may yet bail completely on this one, Tim, given there are bandits there. They've still got all three EMPs in back pockets. So they've got plenty of options. They're just trying to decide where they push in. And by the looks of it, it's going to be construction side. I haven't seen one of these in a while. No, they need to deal with crying underneath, really, because he's... Mm, he's gone a little bit deep there. He's in a position potentially to deny this breach from the hatch. If he can get himself into bar and onto stage, there is the possibility. Um, but obviously, in doing so, Rogue need to be careful that they're not being covered off. And it looks like they are. There is somebody just holding that angle. It's going to be rise. Oh, here we go. That timing. In. Absolutely beautiful. Bates Canto into position for the nade to come in. And then Rise hits Spite at the same time. Unreal play from Rise. I would love to know. For those on the desk, afterwards, I'd love to know, was that planned or was it thought of on the spot? You know, did they come in and say, oh, if they defend this site, we'll go here and do this and get a native from stock? Because if that was mid-round decision-making to choose to adapt that way, absolutely beautiful coming out of walls. It now looks worrying for Rogue, who are fast going to find this game running away from them unless they get a kill or two here in the mid-round, which is looking difficult. Bibu is going to get that East Breach open. Time Dreaming. could be a factor here because you've still got Deepak on Catwalk. Catwalk, if it is in the possession of defenders, can hold off a push from any side and can be a real okay, sticking Rise. point. But Rise manages to get both of the important players there. Deepak and Leon, he's got all four so far. If he finds crying underneath, it'll be an ace for him. Shinka is going to be looking to get the diffuser down, will be successful. Very little that the Jaeger can do from underneath and Rise, I'm sure. He's going to be shouting for his opportunity to get this final kill. But no, Wolves, they are playing it super smart. They're not bothered about the ace. They're just getting themselves out of there and holding those posts plant positions. I mean, why would you bother going aggressive here as well? Sure, hold the angle and wait for the man to come pushing in. They've got a bit of a pin coming in from the alibis. He drops the hatch and may now be looking to try and push down below and crying to wear. But it's all a wild goose chased him because whilst he's worrying about the man downstairs, that diffuser waits for absolutely no one. Rise playing this to perfection as Led crying around the ringer and it'll be 6-3 to Wolves. I'm really worrying about where Rogue are going to find anything in this game still, Tim. The drop shot pistol from Bibu getting styled on, son. What a round from Wolves from start to finish. Absolutely beautiful. Mowgli gets taken down. It doesn't rattle them. They have the adaptation. They have the plan B. They have the plan C. They have everything they need at their disposal. And as you say, Des, that was one of the best teamwork kills that I have seen possibly ever in Siege. Absolutely beautiful. We're going to play the Exothermic on, understanding that Kanto is going to come in for that bandit trick, and that's when we can hit him with a vertical nade. We can guarantee you'll be in that position. It is just... It, it's just next level of thinking. Please ask him on the interview if that was planned. I imagine you'll speak to Rise if they win, but please ask, round nine, was that planned? Because, again, if that's something they've just kind of pulled out of nowhere... Unbelievable. Un unreal. unreal. Genuinely unbelievable. The positioning, timing, everything. And to then run to site and pick up a 4K as well. What a round from Rise. What a round. 
He's had a fantastic game again um, as Rise. He really has. There's been some important moments from him. I know he's not necessarily got the most he's, kills he's, on he's the board. He's on the flank. But again, he's got he has like just that. had such important moments, holding Kanto off them. You know, he was there preventing before he did any of that. Let's not forget, there might have been a forward kill. There might have been a nade kill. Before any of that, he was the one that was stopping them challenging the hatch. He was actually playing. He'd shot out the bottom of stage wall and was playing underneath there to prevent anybody challenging the hatch when Bibu went to open that wall. That was the initial plan. So, you know, just fantastic play from Rise. It's one of those that I can't look at a single player on the side of walls and not think about some really significant play they've had this game. When it was people on the rush when they had several players off on the road. Whether it was Shinka with that jump out vault to get Leon, for example. Rise with the flank and the 4K in the last round. Amogi and Bibu. You haven't even got a point at a single round because every single round there's just so much impact being felt. And that's the scary part about them. It feels like a team. Everyone is getting involved. Rice is going to get himself up onto the rooftop. As you say, just difficult to stop a team like this when they're on a rampage. Wolves are just absolutely flying right now. They're going to clear out that utility in a moment, I would imagine. The new jammer will be gone, and then we will see that wall get opened up. As you say, they're just more waiting for the when rather than the how, and that is going to be the exothermic going off. Wall What's open, this? and there could be a bit of aggression coming oh, straight boy. forward. They're straight in as well, marching their way forwards. Two kills coming nice and quick. And Roger on panic stations. They've got pace. But I don't know what you call this that the Wolves have got. P4 turns one more around. There's two left. It's Crying and Kanto. Five kills between the two of them. Staring down the barrel of three players that have got 23. They find one more. It's a zero and ten game for Kanto. Crying's got to hold on. Finds one more. 1v1 against Shinka. Comes in for the swing. Wolves with a flawless second half. Take it seven and three. So unfortunate for crying there great effort in the 1v3 but it's all smiles across the side of walls bibu flying raz is too cool for school and it is absolutely <laughs> no surprise they have just had the performance of the stage god they're all going off look at them the mocking fist bumps p4's giving one to the camera rise having a little jig to himself that, there was definitely a little bit behind this game for both teams as well oh, it meant yeah. so much because it's that battle for first place yeah. Absolutely. Wolves are still flawless. They've still got 15 points. Five and zero. No one stood up to them so far. I dare say after that, that they will be flawless at the end of the stage. I reckon, I don't see who beats them now. Rogue were my only team that could possibly challenge them. In the first half, they did. But that second half, woo Rogue got showed what real pressure looks like. Absolutely flying at the minute. No two ways about it. I absolutely love seeing it. Can't wait to see more from Wolves and whether or not Rogue bounce back because now they've had their real challenge. This is where it's time to start adapting, boys. We'll go to a quick break. When we come back, Desk and Tim will break it down for you.